my co-panelists on TEDx, and who is sitting here in Ranchi, in my face. Delighted to be here. Thank you very much. My name is Deepak Vora. I'm the handsomest ambassador India has ever had. <laughs> Tried my hand in films. Was a super flop. Two films. Both failed miserably. And became a diplomat. When I was born in 1951, the overwhelming majority of Indians had never been educated. The overwhelming majority lived in abject poverty. And women's empowerment was a joke. By the time I die, India would have achieved the three main pillars of development. Women's empowerment, elimination of poverty, and total literacy. Why do I say this? Let's take a look at the first slide. Take a look at how demographies are changing. The median age in India is 28, which means half of all Indians like me are less than 28, and half like you are more than 28. Our window of opportunity is still 2050. Western Europe is 44, the median age. The Pope described it as an elderly and haggard continent. Japan is 47. They've forgotten how to make babies. We can teach them. We have the technology. We may not be a productive society. We are a reproductive society. The result of this is we are already the world's youngest country with the largest number of people in the producing age group, which is 15 to 64. Less than 15, more than 64, you consume more than you produce. So we have the largest number of producing people. Relentless focus on education, 50,000 colleges and universities, one and a half million schools, 320 million students, 51% are our daughters. Please clap. Economic power, four largest economies in the world. China in PPP, purchasing power parity, USA. Number three, India. Number four, Japan. Where is Europe? Missing in action. Let's take a look at the new World Wealth Report. 2020, India's privately held wealth is $8.2 trillion, the sixth largest in the world. And according to this report, by 2020, which is eight years from now, the average Indian will have twice as much private wealth as the average German or the average British citizen. What do we spend it on? Eating better, looking better, studying better, communicating better, etc., etc. When I say looking better, 650,000, for those who are not familiar with India, 650,000 towns and villages in India and 15 million beauty parlors. So you can imagine how much money we spend on looking better, communicating better, 1.6 billion mobile connections for a 1.3 billion population, and 1 billion smartphones. And you are all familiar with what this means, traveling better, etc. 2015 International Yoga Resolution, co-sponsored, introduced by India, co-sponsored by 177 of the 193 members of the UN, the largest in the history of the UN. And ma'am, the French ambassador sitting there, I was in the General Assembly, says, my country supports yoga because India is the spiritual mother of all mankind. What a beautiful thing to come from the French. In Yemen, when there was a civil war, we were asked to evacuate our nationals. All other countries were told, you can't come in to evacuate your nationals, only the Indian military. We trust them. I went to Paris the same year. We brought out 20,000 people from 40 countries. The immigration officer at Charles de Gaulle Airport sees my passport and says, you're an ambassador of India. I said, yes, I am. He said, well, you brought out 500 Frenchmen from Yemen. I said, if we made a mistake, we'll take them back. He says, no, sir. He gets up and salutes me and says, thank you, India. <laughs> this is the new India that we are talking about. 1969, I don't know if any of you uh, remembers, you're not old enough, but we were invited to the founding conference of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation. When we got there, we were not allowed into the hall. We had been invited. We were booted out. We were thrown out. Water and electricity in our hotel was switched off. India did not have the strength to retaliate, ladies and gentlemen. 50th founding anniversary of the OIC last year. Who do you think is the guest of honor? Your country, India. So the military rebalancing today, take a look at this, the most powerful militaries. None of these are my figures. These are all UN, various agency figures. Most powerful USA spend a lot of money, 
Second Russia, third China, fourth is India. Where is Europe still missing in action? Result of these tectonic changes, 15% of the world that ruled the other 85%, they are now, they don't know what is happening. The biggest disease in the developed world, ladies and gentlemen, is depression and loneliness. Britain even has a minister for loneliness. And they are training young people. They say they have 9 million lonely citizens. They are training people to be companions. I sent my photograph saying these are all rich widows. I would love to be their companion. Then they responded to me, yes, we are lonely, but we are not that lonely. <laughs> so we have depression, loneliness, while India is bubbling with self-confidence and energy. Thank you. We'll handle it ourselves. 2004 tsunami, Kashmir earthquake, Sikkim earthquake, Kedarnath floods, whatever, whatever, whatever. Not one dollar we take from anybody now. We do it all ourselves. In fact, we help other countries in this. Just one humiliation. My colleagues, my friends from France, ladies and gentlemen, I don't think you know what hunger is. Ask me. 65, we fought a war. The rains didn't come. 66, the rains didn't come. Mrs. Gandhi, the then prime minister, went to the US to beg for food. New York Times wrote, new Indian leader comes begging. She came back and she said, never again will we beg. And we were told, don't eat on Mondays. I have slept hungry throughout 1966. I have slept hungry on Mondays. Ask me what hunger is. And your country, which said, feed us, is today the second largest producer of food grains in the whole world. <laughs> For too long have others written India's destiny. A country that forgets its past, ladies and gentlemen, has no future. We remember our past. We made mistakes, but never, never, never again. I have spoken to over 7 million kids in India. And the promise they make me that they will write India's destiny themselves, not allowing anyone else to write. I touch my ears. I ask God to forgive me. They make this commitment to India, and I make them a commitment. In a few years from now, I will leave my body. And I will have a simple memorial which the Indian military has built for me in Kargil, the area that I love. It simply states, scattered in the dust, silent I remain. When India's bugle calls, I will rise again. That is to serve my mother. Deloitte Attitude Survey 2019 of millennials and generation next in 42 countries. Europeans are at the bottom of the list when it comes to optimism amongst youth. Number one in the list, you can Google it, is India. And Goldman Sachs says, India's story will be shaped by its 450 million Gen Next, Gen Z, the post-millennial generation. Sheer size of India's youth combined with improved education and sustained growth will make it one of the most compelling stories. Here is a book, ladies and gentlemen. Our time has come written by an American diplomat about how India is shaping its place in the world. And by the way, this book is very popular in Pakistan. So as an Indian, have faith and confidence in ourselves. Do not allow cynicism to affect us. If you have to be afraid, be afraid of fear. We say, we have hai to dar se daro, kyunki dar ke aage, dar ke aage jeet hai. Be the change you want to see. Somebody asked the great Mahatma, how do I change the world? He said, begin with yourself. His name was Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi. The Prime Minister of Lesotho once asked me to sort out a problem for him. I said, sir, I have no expertise. He said, give it a shot. I did. The problem got solved. He called me to his office and he says, Ambassador Deepak, are you God? I said, no, sir, I'm an Indian. That's the next best thing. <laughs> At the height of the Kargil conflict, this young man, you remember the Kargil conflict 20 years ago, went to register for the army. People laughed at him. Both his legs were cut off below the knees in a train accident. He was handicapped. They said, you can't join the army. His classic answer, gentlemen, I have come to fight the enemy, not to run away from the enemy. Look at the spirit of India. And I'll spend half a minute on this slide. This is in Sikkim. This young man, uh, when we had this earthquake in Sikkim in 2011, 300 landslides broke, broke the main road from Gangtok to Siliguri. We asked international experts. They said, it's going to take you at least six weeks to repair these 300 broken portions of the road. We asked the border roads organization. We could not wait for six weeks. I was there with my Doordarshan team filming uh, the, the repair and the rescue effort. We asked border roads. They said, we'll come back to you and tell you when we can reopen the road. And as I stand before you, 19 hours later, the director general called 
to say the road is open. 19 hours versus whatever the figure was being given to us. For the first time in human history, one quarter of our population is in school, college, enthusiastic, tech savvy, gungo, two thirds is in the productive age group. What's happened to this? Fastest elimination of poverty ever. We are lifting one Indian out of extreme poverty every second. And this one generation, your generation, my kids, self-confidence, self-esteem, determination to chart your course. Every two seconds, we built one toilet. Every one second, we opened two bank accounts. Every 15 minutes, we are building even today one kilometer of highway. And your poor country goes to Russia, the prime minister, last year in September. And when Putin says, I have financial issues, India gives him a billion dollar loan. India gives a loan to Russia. Please figure out what's happening. Swami Vivekanand said the future India must be much greater than ancient India. India is awakening. And on that Sikkim slide, which I just showed you, that boy, as I was watching and yelling out to him, be careful, son, be careful, he slipped. He tumbled 80 feet to his death. I rushed down with my team with my right hand. I pushed his brain back into his skull. It had come out. We carried his body to his house. I remember this distinctly. It's embedded in my memory. I met his mother, a 55-year-old Sikkimese woman. Said, anything I can do for you apart from the compensation you'll get from everybody? She said, yes, sir. You are special advisor to prime minister in so many countries. Get my younger child a job. I said, I'll speak to all the big industrialists to give him a job. She said, sir, I didn't ask you for the private sector. My elder child died for India. Give the younger boy also. Let him join Border Road so when the time comes, he too can die for India. Look at the spirit of this woman. And as the water came into my eyes, I looked at her. And in Hindi, I said, Ma, tujhe salam. If I'm ever born in India again, I would like it to be from the womb of a mother like you. And at that moment, I got the answer, ladies and gentlemen, that I have searched since childhood. Why are we Indians? I got the answer. We are not Indians because we live in India. We are Indians because India lives in us. That is who we are. And therefore, since India is awakening, all of you who were sleeping for the last 10 minutes should also now wake up because... Raise the volume. Thank you so much. Please stand and applaud if you are like this. Thank you. अरे अभी तो पार्टी शुरू हुई है